Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to look at how to enter and copy data into a report's data set. We'll begin by looking at how you create a data source, which will allow manual data entry, and then look at how you can simply type data directly into a data set, including how to choose the column names and data types, and how to edit that data manually afterwards. We'll then look at the steps required to configure the report server to allow the deployment of reports which have manually entered data. And for the final part of the video, we'll look at how you can copy and paste data from a variety of sources, such as a website, an Excel workbook, and a basic text file straight into a report's data set. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a new blank report in Report Builder. And for the first part of the video, I'd like to make sure that I'm not currently connected to a report server. If I look down at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, I can see that I currently am. So I'm going to click the disconnect button just to disconnect from that report server. And I'll explain why that's important just a little later on. Now that we've done that, the first thing we need to create in the report is a data source which allows us to enter data. This part's actually pretty straightforward. I can right click on my data sources folder in the report data window, choose add data source. I don't need to change its name, but I'm going to call it enter data so that I know what it's for. And then I'll use an embedded connection. I'll change the connection type from SQL server to enter data. And that's basically it. There's no connection string to build. There are no credentials to provide. All I need to do is click OK to create that data source. Now that we've created a data source, we can use that to create a data set and start typing in our data. To do that, I can right click on my data source and choose add data set. I'll change its name in just a moment. I want to focus on entering the data itself first. And to do that, I don't just type my data directly into the query box. I can click on the query designer button at the bottom of the dialog box to open up the query designer tool. Now, unlike when you have a connection to a SQL Server database and you get to pick from a list of tables and columns, here we just get presented with an empty table and we can start typing our data into it. For our sample data, I wanted to find a current news story that would give us some simple values to type in. But I didn't want that news story to be related to the doom and gloom about COVID-19 or about Brexit or about the pound sliding even further against the euro. And you can imagine it's not an easy task to find a story that isn't doom and gloom these days. Anyway, I did manage to find a story about a lady who managed to spend £16 million in Harrods. And there's a related article that explains how much she's spent on various different things. So we're going to create a basic table that lists out the items she's bought and how much spent on each one. I was fascinated by the uh, the item that said sandwich by Tom for £332,000. I wanted to know what was in that sandwich, um, but as it turns out, it's a lot less exciting than it seems. It's something to do with high-end designer furniture. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pretend that it's an actual sandwich because that's a bit more interesting. Um, so the first thing we're going to type in is the name of the first item, uh, Boucheron Jewelry. I'm not sure of the pronunciation, so apologies if I got that wrong. I'm not a very uh, rich or fashionable person, so I don't know who most of these people are. Anyway, that's what we'll type in. I'll head back to my query designer. Now the text editor here is a little um, awkward to use. The first thing it's worthwhile doing is clicking into the first cell in the table. And then you can begin typing in the value of the first item. So Boucheron Jewelry. If I then press enter, that takes the active cell down to the next row, but it doesn't actually create a new row for me to enter data into yet. You might be able to make out these little asterisk symbols. There's one at the left hand side of the new row and there's one above the new column. Now these new rows and columns don't actually exist yet. And that means that if I begin typing, the thing I start typing doesn't actually appear in the cell. So if I start typing in the next item name, Cartier Jewelry, if I type in the letter C, it doesn't actually type the letter C into the cell. It just generates the new row. And then if I carry on typing, so I'll type in the letter C again. So I'll type in uh, Cartier Jewelry. Now you can find, now you can see that the, the value starts to appear. It's a little awkward. Um, I frequently forget and I try to type in the first character and the first character doesn't appear in the cell. 
So an alternative way to create a new row is to click on the little asterisk button at the left hand side. When you've clicked on that, you can click back into the cell that you've just created and then type in the next item. So Dennis Basson Fashion, I think that was his name. And then an alternative way to create a new row. If I'm on this new row, I can press the F2 key on the keyboard. You might be familiar with that technique from Microsoft Excel or Access, which you can press to edit the contents of a cell. Um, and this is going to be Tom's sandwich. I can then create a new column in a similar way. If I press the tab key right now, it navigates into the next column, but doesn't actually create that column for me. So the first character I type in, if I start trying to type in the number 332, the first number three that I type in doesn't actually get typed in. It just creates the new column. But then having done that, I can start typing in the, the value and it will appear in the cell. I can use the up arrow key to navigate up a row. This one's 402,000. And then Cartier Jewelry was 1.4 million. So 1,400 and three more zeros. And then Boucheron Jewelry was 3.5 million. So 3,500 and then three more zeros. Two more things to quickly do. I want to rename the columns. An easy way to do that is to double click on a column name. So I can double click new column zero and I'll call this one item name. And then an alternative way to do it is to right click on the column and then choose change name. Same basic principle. So I can call that amount. The final thing I'm going to do is type, uh, change the data type. If you hover the mouse cursor over any column name, it tells you what the data type of that column is. And even though I've typed in numbers, the data type of that column is considered to be string or text. So I can right click on the amount column name and choose change type. Change it to either integer for whole numbers or floats for fractional values or decimal values. I'll go with integer for this one. It isn't immediately obvious that anything's changed there. But if I do now type in a value in this column that isn't a number. So let's try creating a new row. I'll type in some text in that cell and then um, you can see if I navigate away from that cell, it's highlighted in red. So if you hover the mouse over that, it tells you there's a data type error. If you do see any values highlighted in red, it's worthwhile resolving those before you create the data set. Otherwise, you'll see errors in tables when you present them in the report. I'm actually going to delete that new row that I've created. So I can right click on the row next to the invalid data and choose delete. And I could have done the same thing to delete columns as well, of course. Anyway, that looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK once. You can see that the data I've typed in has been converted into a an XML string. So this is how the data is actually generated. You can see that the values we've typed in are contained in XML tags, one for item and name, one for an amount. The data types we've set, you can see down at the bottom of the page, at the end of the XML string, it tells you the data types of the various columns. So if you knew how to type in XML data, you could have just typed that in directly. But anyway, um, I think typing into a table is a little easier. I'm going to change my data set name so that it's called spending. And then I'll click OK. And there's my first data set created into which I've entered custom data. Now that we've created a data set, we should create some way to display it in the report. I think a chart would work quite nicely for this data. Let's start by tidying up the report design first. I'm going to select and then delete my title text box. And then I'm going to right click in the page footer and choose to remove that. I can then right click into the report body and choose insert chart. And the chart I'm going to go for is going to be a, a bar chart. I'll click OK to create it. And then I can click somewhere inside the chart to start assigning values to the various elements. I want to put the amount in the values category. An easy way to do that is to click the plus symbol above the values box and then choose amount. And then I want to put the item names as the labels down the left hand side. So for the category groups, I can change the details item by clicking the drop down arrow there and assign the item name to the details. Now that I've done that, I'm going to click away from the chart to hide the data panel. And then I can select the object, click and drag to resize it a little bit. 
and then I can run the report. This is where it's very important, by the way, that you're not connected to a report server. So just check that you have disconnected before you run the report. But when you're ready, click run and you'll see that data presented in the form of a basic bar chart. You can edit data fairly easily as well once it's been added to the data set. To do that, let's head back to the design view. And the easiest thing to do is to right click on the spending data set and then choose to view its query. That'll take us straight back to the data entry view and we can then either modify information that already exists, uh, delete columns and rows or add new columns and rows. Let's add one more row, which is the next item in our list at perfume for £160,000. So I'm going to add a new row and say perfume for the item name and 160,000 for the amount. Having done that, I can click OK and then simply running the report again will immediately add that new row to the list. You can see it's represented there in the chart. So that's all working quite nicely so far, but let's see what happens if we try to do the same thing while connected to a report server. If you're not sure how to connect to a report server, by the way, we do have another video in this same playlist which explains how that works. So just for reference, that's the one you'll need. Assuming you've done that part already, I'll head back to the design view of my report. I'll click the connect link at the bottom of the screen, choose my report server from the drop down list, select it and then hit the connect button. If I try to run my report again now, it'll fail immediately with a message about the enter data data extension not being configured or registered for this report server. And that's the case by default in report server, the enter data option isn't available or it isn't configured for the report server. So the next part of this video, if I just click OK and head back to the design view, and the next part of this video is going to explain how you can configure your report server to allow the enter data data extension. To register the data extension, I need to modify the report server config file. Now the exact location of that file will depend on which version of reporting services you're running. To find out where you need to go, you can head over to this page on the Microsoft Docs website, which tells you everything you need to know about the report server config file, including the location of that file for various different versions of reporting services. I'm currently using Reporting Services 2017, so I'm going to click the copy button to copy that path to the default location for the report server config file. I can then open up a Windows Explorer window by pressing Windows and E, and then I can paste in what I've just copied and click the arrow or press enter to go to that folder. I'll find my RS report server config file sitting in there. It's an XML file, much like the XML we're actually using to generate our data in this report. You can double click on that file to open it in the default editor. Alternatively, you might find it better to right click on the file and choose open with. Then you can choose exactly which application to use. And for this example, I'm going to pick notepad. It's certainly easier to edit in a tool like Visual Studio, but I'm assuming it's less likely that everyone in, in, who's watching this video will have Visual Studio installed, whereas almost everyone should have Notepad available to them. If you don't see Notepad in this shortlist, by the way, you can click choose another app and then browse for Notepad. So I'll choose Notepad and it opens up a, what looks like a basic text file. I can just maximize that to make it a little easier to edit. Now I need to know what information to add to this file to register the new data extension. And again, you can find this information on another page of the Microsoft Docs website, this time explaining how to enter data into a report builder report. This section here contains the extra XML that I need to insert into the report server config file. So I'm going to copy that by clicking the copy button and then it shows you exactly where to paste that into the required file with this little screenshot here. So I need to find the data section inside this config file. I can use the find method. I can use edit find to find uh, data, or I can just manually scroll down the list to find the data um, node. So here we go, data starting with the word data in some angle brackets and then ending with forward slash data in angle brackets. So what I've just copied needs to be inserted somewhere between these two tags. So I'm going to give myself a blank line above the 
forward slash data and then just use the tab key to indent that back into its original position. I'll hit the tab key again on the line I've just created to get it in line with all the other extensions. This isn't necessary, by the way. It's just nice to see everything laid out neatly. Then I can simply paste in what I've just copied and tidy up the layout of that. So again, you don't need to do this, but it's nice to see things neatly laid out. It certainly helps to read what is quite a complicated file. So having done all that, I simply now need to save the file and close it. So I'm going to hit the save option or press Ctrl and S, close down the file, and then we're ready to test out our report again. Now, in principle, we should just be able to run this report again and have it use the new registered data extension to display the results. Although you might find that that doesn't appear to do anything the first time, it sometimes takes a little while for something to happen. And it can sometimes seem as though Report Builder has crashed as well. Um, you could try clicking the refresh button, although that seems to have made it even worse. But just be patient. Trust me, it does eventually recover and will eventually display the results using the new data extension. Though, as I say, it can take a little while for that to happen. But here we go. It's finally happening. There we go. So it's now using the new report data extension um, to show our entered data. I guess the acid test really is if we save this to a report server, can we still see it um, when it's deployed? So let's give that a quick try. If I head back to the design view, I'm going to choose to save this report and I'm going to point to my um, report server, the one to which I've just connected to. I'll change its name, let's call it spending, and then click the save button. And then I've already navigated to the home page of my report server, so I can head over here to my, um, uh, my report web portal, give the page a quick refresh to display my newly saved report, which will appear any moment now. He says, any moment now, there we go. So here's my spending report. I can click on that to view it and it should eventually appear. So there we go. So having registered that data extension, it now allows us to enter data into our reports. For the final part of the video, I'd just like to demonstrate that it's possible to copy and paste data into a data set. Now, it doesn't really matter where you choose to copy your data from. It could be an Excel worksheet. It could be a text file. For this example, I'm going to start by using a website. It's going to be the Rotten Tomatoes website, which shows the list of top 100 movies according to Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I'm not sure I agree entirely with their choices. For example, I can't find Predator anywhere in the list at all, um, which is surprising. Um, but fortunately, in good news, there's no sign of a Twilight movie in this list. So I think we'll go with it for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by selecting everything from the first column header called rank. I'm going to highlight that across the right hand column, scroll downwards to highlight the entire list. I don't need to grab everything, but I might as well while I'm here. Then I can press Ctrl and C to copy. Then I can head back to my report builder report, right click on the enter data data source and choose to add a data set. I'll call it top 100 movies uh, excluding Predator. I can only assume that Predator was so good they put it in its own exclusive list. Um, and then I can click the Query Designer button. The pasting is, is again a little awkward. Um, again, some techniques you might expect to work if I just press Ctrl and V to paste, nothing apparently happens. So the best option is to right click on the top left hand corner cell and choose Paste. Then all of your data will appear. Now, the reason I chose to include the column headers is because I want to copy and paste these into the actual column headers. It would be very nice if I could just choose to promote the first row into column headers, as you can in some other Microsoft products, but sadly that's not available. So I'm going to select the rank and then I'm going to press Ctrl and C to copy it and then double click column zero and then Ctrl and V to paste and then just repeat that process, selecting the column headers and then Control C to copy, Control V to paste after double clicking on the actual column header. Now you need to be slightly careful about the last one, number of reviews. You can't include spaces in a column name. So I'm just going to edit that column name to exclude the spaces. And I've gotten rid of the full stop there as well. That's not actually important, but just for consistency. 
Now that I've renamed everything, I want to delete that row of column headers so I can right click next to it and choose delete. And then again, I can change the data types of these columns. So the rank should be stored as a number. The full stop there is going to be treated as a decimal place. So for the rank column, if I right click on rank and choose change type, I'll go with a float. Then I can right click on number of reviews and choose change type and I'll make that an integer. Then I can click OK and OK again. And that's my new data set created. Let's just display that in a simple table. I'm going to select and delete my chart and then I'm going to right click into the report body, choose insert table and then assign those four columns one by one. So I can assign rank, rating, title and number of reviews, which I'll just click and drag in. I'll change the column width of the title and then I just want to avoid the text rendering bug where sometimes not all the text gets displayed. So I'm going to highlight all the cells in the table, change the default font to any other font and then back to the default font. Having done that, I can now run the report and I'll see a table of films from data copied from a website. Just to finally demonstrate that you can indeed do the exact same thing from Excel or text files, I'm going to head back to the design view and I've got an Excel workbook available, which has got a copied set of that Rotten Tomatoes data. So I'm going to click into a single cell in there and press Control and A to highlight the entire table, followed by Control and C to copy everything. Back in Report Builder, I can right click my data source and choose to add a data set. I'll call this one Excel Movies and then I'll click the Query Designer button and again I can just right click and choose Paste. I could then modify the column headings as I did earlier on but for now I'm just going to click the OK button and OK again to see that it's generated a new data set. Likewise just to finish off to show you that you can do the same thing if you have a text file. So this is a tab delimited text file but comma separated value files work equally well. I can press Ctrl and A to highlight everything and copy that to the clipboard. Right click my enter data data source and choose to add a data set to it. Call this one uh, text movies and then hit the query designer, right click and paste. Again, I could promote the column headers by copying and pasting them, but I'm just going to click OK a couple of times and demonstrate that I've got the same set of data available. So there you go, um, a bit about how you get data inserted or typed in or copied and pasted from an external source into your report data data sets. Hopefully you'll find some of those techniques useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.